coming up in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a push and pull mechanic. I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. So what I've got going on on the screen right now is the player, which is just a basic cube in the form of a green square. There's nothing special about the cube. There's no instance variables. It does have the behavior, the platform behavior with the max speed of 120. And I've left pretty much most of that to default except the jump strength, uncheck default controls. I have mapped out uh, basic A, D and W for left, right and jump on the event sheet. I have this bigger red square which I've called box, there's nothing in particular be special about this. I've given this the platform behavior as well and pretty much just left everything to default, uncheck the default controls. And I've got this little sprite down here which is a collision box, um, which is again just a colored sprite that I've made with no instance variables and nothing else. And what we're going to do is we're going to program in the event sheet for this little square to push this block left and right when we come into contact with it. If I play the game now, you can see that when I move left and right and jump, I just move behind it because that's because the red square is in front of me on the layer. Yeah, we've got the one layer. Now we've got this little overlay down here. So what I want to do is hold down control or command on a Mac and just drag out a copy and give it an instance variable. And we're going to give this a number. We're going to call it number. Um, and we're going to give it a string type. The initial value is going to be left. And then if we click on this one, we're going to change that to right. And these are going to go one there and one there. I'm going to make them a little bit narrower. <clears throat> and they're going to sit just along that edge and that edge oh, and that edge there. You'll see why very soon. It's important to note that the image, uh, so the origin point of this square is center bottom. We're going to need to know that when we're putting in the position of these two little blocks. So let's do that now. If we go to the event sheet, we can add an event and we can say system every tick. And then we can set up a sub event, which we say the collision box. And we're going to compare the instance variable that we just set up. So the number, uh, that was a terrible name. We should have just called it position, but you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. So if the value is left, so if it's the left one, we're going to do something and then we're going to copy and paste that and we're going to say if it's the right one. So now when we when we call this event here, every tick, we're going to do a check and see which one we're talking about. So if it's the left one, we want to set its position. We're going to set the position on the X to the box dot X. And remember, it's going to put it at that image point, which is in the center bottom. So we want it to be on the slight, the left hand side of that. So we're going to do the X position minus four pixels. And again, the Y position, again, it's going to be that image point. And we're going to go halfway up at, or a quarter of the way up, which will be minus eight pixels. And then we're going to drag that down and we're going to do the exact same thing, except instead of a minus, we're going to change it to a plus because it's going to be on the right hand side. Remember, minus takes you to the left, plus takes you to the right on the X axis. And then if we play it, we'll see now if we make them initially visible, their positions are nowhere near where I wanted them to be. So let's have a look why. So if it's left, set the position of box.x. Let's just take out. Oh. Let's see where it puts them when we just do that. Okay, yeah, right in the center where I thought, right where the image point is. So we need to send the the one on the left, let's just do the X position minus four, and then we'll do the X position 
plus 4 on the right one. Okay, I remember, I know what's happened. I didn't change the plus and the minus on the y. Anyway, let's make that 6 and 6. And I think we can probably just get away with it there because we're going to be overlapping that when, when we charge the square anyway. It needs to be wider so it's outside the width of the, the square. So let's change it to 10 and 10. That should be fine. Yeah, so now when I go up, before I collide with the box, I'll touch that square. And again, when I collide with the box that way, you can see that it's just about a pixel, which is fine. That's all it's going to need to, in order to overlap. But in fact, what I'm going to do, I want to, just to be sure, give it another couple. Yeah, that's fine. So now we're going to overlap that when we when we get up to it. So that's fine. And what that's going to do is it's going to tell the system what side of the, the block we're on. So on the left side, it's going to know because we're overlapping with the left collision box. And if it's the right side, it's going to know because, again, we're overlapping with the right collision box. So now we've got those two bits in position. We can get rid of those. They're always just going to be there no matter what. Um, I can set them to initially visible because we're not going to want to see them. Now we need to set up an event that says when we overlap these, we do something. So obviously the box has the platform behavior. Um, I'm going to set the max speed of the blocks to 50% of that of the player. So player's max speed is 120. Box max speed is going to be 60. So now I'm going to say player is overlapping another object collision box. Then we need to do the checks, so we're going to bring this one down. So if we're overlapping the left one, we also need to set a condition. So if we're overlapping it, we also want to check to see if a key is down. So if we're overlapping on the left side and the D key is down, so if those two things are both true, which means we're pushing right, we're going to want to simulate movement for the box. So we're going to say box simulate control right and it's going to move at its speed the 60% speed but what's going to happen is the player is going to move faster and I'll show you so we're going to actually overtake the box and then it stops so we need to slow the player down so we need to also go player set max speed to 60 and that should work fine but there is an easier way to do it There's also a gap there, that's because of the, um, the collision box, but we can change that in a sec. Um, there's an easier way to do it, and the, the best way to do it would be to use a global variable. So we're going to call this push speed, um, and the push speed is going to be 60, and then we're going to add another variable, and we're going to call it player speed. So now when we're overlapping the collision box, and we're moving to the right. Instead of setting the max speed to 60, we can set the max speed to push speed. And that's just an easier way to do it. We can do the box as well. Oh, that's simulating right. Um, but that's funny. We don't need to do the box because the box is by default always going to be 60. The player speed will change um, depending on what we're doing. So we'll, we'll do that. Um, we also need to now set up a condition that when we're not pushing the box we set the speed back because what will happen now if we don't do anything we'll push it but then when we move away the speed is still the push speed so we need to set it back so we need to basically set up the opposite of this condition so what we need to do is copy this block here and we just need to change this inverted so if we're not overlapping the collision box we can get rid of all of that and we can just drag down this and change that to player speed. Hey, oh, I've set normal speed to zero. 120 is normal speed. So now we can push it and we go back to our normal speed.
since math was never my strong point. It's 11. I can set these back to invisible. Now we need to be able to pull it. So what we want to happen is when we're overlapping that, if we're pushing D, we want to be pulling it the other way. But if we do that, we're going to create a situation where we can never let go of it because we'd be pulling it towards us at the right, at the same speed the box is, and that little collision thing will always be overlapping us. So we need to add in a button push. So what I like to do is use the shift. So hold shift to pull. So the way we do that is we can add a vent. We can say player is overlapping another object, the collision box. And then again, we do the checks so we can bring this one down and we can say if that is left but this time if the A key is down we simulate left and we set uh, to push speed and again I'm going to use Q and I'm going to say pulling left if I do that I'll show you what will happen I'm not going to be able to let go of it so I'm going to be able to push it and pull it but now I'm just stuck to it. Unless I jump away, it's always just going to be attached to me. So I'm going to add another condition. I'm going to push C on the keyboard and I'm going to say keyboard key is down and I'm going to say shift. So I'm only going to be able to pull it if we're holding shift. So I'm pushing it and I can move away. If I, if I hold down shift, I can now pull it. And I can push it on that side. So let's add the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna copy all of this, paste it. I'm gonna change this to pulling right. And I'm gonna just change the A to a D. I'm gonna change the left to a right. And that should be fine. There. I'm pulling it, I can let go, I can push it, shift is down, oh, I need to change that to right. And that should be fine. And now I can push and pull, and I can push and pull. And that's how you make a push and pull mechanic. If you found the video useful, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. It really helps the channel and encourages me to make more of these easy game mechanic tutorials. I'll see you in the next one.